Okay, so this is Wendy Murphy. I'd like to introduce Frank Xu, who is the Clavius Professor of Science and Director of the Laboratory of Informatics and Data Mining at Fordham University in New York City. His research interests include com combinatorics, graphical model, interconnection networks, and computational intelligence using combinatorial fusion, Algorithm, otherwise known as CFA, his work in CFA using rank score characteristic function and cognitive diversity finds applications in big data analytics and macroinformatics in STEM area, society, and business. And with that, I'll say to Frank, press star one, and, and please go ahead. I've Frank, unmuted everyone. Frank, Did you hear the introduction, please? Yeah. Hey, Frank. Uh, and Wendy, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. So oh, Frank good. is unmuted now as well. I did everyone. Yeah. When I tried the star, star one, it said uh, command not authorized. So I think Frank probably ran into the same problem. But Frank, are you there? Or maybe he... <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we're recording this. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do a restart. I don't know. Frank, um, let me see if there's anything in the chat window from Frank. The meeting is currently being recorded. We have plenty of people on the call. Where is Frank? Uh, Frank, can you try star one again, if you can hear us? Oh, okay. Now I can I can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Okay. I think yeah. star one okay. is now working. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I can talk now, right? Please yes. start. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I want to share some of my uh, my work uh, in the past uh, decade with uh, with other folks in the Cognitive System Institute. Uh, my title is to fuse or not to fuse, and uh, you know, in the in the many situations uh, when we try to combine information together, uh, we get to the condition that you know, how do we combine them together, or when do we do that? And uh, I just want to share this cognitive diversity, uh, the concept of uh, the similarity between two uh, scoring systems uh, with our view. Next page. Um, and uh, you know, in a situation that when we don't want to rank a list of choices, uh, you know, those choices can be uh, subjects, objects, or items, or maybe options. And uh, in many different domain applications, like in biomedical and health, uh, we are talking about uh, genes or ligands or DNA fragments. In the STEM areas, we're talking about targets documents and trajectories, or host names in cybersecurity. And those are all in technology and engineering. In the social and uh, society choices, uh, we are asked to rank many things, you know, everyday life, movies, books, you know, apartments, you know, what kind of apartment we should take, the skaters, international figure skating, uh, and also sports teams. You know, how do we, you know, how do we rank those sports teams? How do we predict the outcome of a sports uh, competition? And then in business and finance, we are asked to rank or score the customers, uh, vendors, uh, corporate risk, and uh, or maybe stocks in the portfolio management, uh, you know, uh, area. 
And also related to this, uh, in the machine learning, you know, data mining, in the classification, and in some other effective computing situation, uh, we are asked to rank the labels, to, to classify the labels, or maybe the degree of stress, if, um, you know, so things like that. Uh, next page. Next page. Um, so in that case, every choice over there, we might have to be, uh, you know, every choice would have to be uh, described by a set of variables. And those variables we are talking about, you know, it can be attributes, it can be criteria, it can be cues, or it can be features. And some of them can be, you know, indicators, and you know, some of them can be judges, can be uh, some kind of uh, machine learning systems, or can be other parameters. So here we have, you know, we have uh, scoring systems. Uh, those are the variables, and we have A and B, and we try to rank uh, or score those choices. Uh, D sub one, D sub two, up to D sub n. And then we have the the first function is a score function called S sub A. And we have a score function S sub B. And then we can change the score function to a rank function R sub A, R sub B by doing sorting, sorting the score functions. And then here, you know, we can try to combine those. Well, we want to combine A and B to get a better result. Um, and then there are, there are ways to do that. There are many ways to do that, as everybody knows. And here I just show you, you know, one or uh, two other combinations that. One is C is by score combination. So you can see that the score combination will be, you know, S sub A plus S sub B. And then uh, here we just use the average. We can use the average. We can, we can use the weighted average there. Um, so now we'll get, go to the score function of the score combination C. And then, but on the other way, you know, we can also use the rank combination. We can combine R sub A and R sub B uh, to get another combination. And we call that D. So that's a kind of, uh, it, it's a rank combination over there. So the outcome may be different. And that's what the core, that's the, the focus of, of today's talk, you know. You know, different kind of combination can have a different results, can have different outcomes. Okay, and uh, so next next slide. So I show you that you know this this has a great applications to many many different areas, and here I just mentioned four of them. You know, number one is the on the upper left hand side. This is the the pharmaceutical companies they have to you know score or rank on the ligands, the chemical compounds. So that they they will be you know able to use that as a drug um, you know target um, to to uh, to cure the disease or, or something like that. And here I'm going to have a one example uh, showing you in the structural based uh, virtual screening uh, we have a way to uh, to combine different scoring systems. Now on the right hand side, upper right hand side, this is crossing the street. You know, like uh, when you want to cross the street. What we do, I mean, we our eyes would look at the street to see if any cars are coming. Our ears would try to hear anything, if we hear anything. And then those two information would have to be combined some way, uh, you know, somewhere in the in the neocortex over there. You know, if we are if we are seeing something, you know, that means we take a, take a picture. That's, that's, so that would go through the visual um, nerve systems. And uh, you go through the you know primary visual cortex and go to the secondary visual cortex and so on. And uh, anyway, so those two systems got to be combined uh, later on. On the lower left hand side, that's the internet search uh, strategy. And uh, normally in the in the programmable uh, computing right now, we have the internet search is really you know getting a query, and after the query you can have a similarity score score of the of all the query and then we compare that query with all the documents. And then in a situation like that, you know, we have two similarity scores. We want to combine them together so that we can get a better uh, a more accurate uh, systems. 
Now on the right hand side, lower right hand side, that's the interna international figure skating judgment. And uh, next page, next slide, we will uh, I'll give you one example. So this is the only example I will give you uh, numerical examples here. So we have uh, in the in the you know in the international figure skating competitions. So we want to rank a group of skaters. And uh, and here we have three judges. We have J1, J2, J3. Uh, so three judges, we only have eight skaters here. So the three judges, you know, judge one give the, the score. You have a score function over there. And a judge two give a score function also, and judge three give a score function over there. And then, you know, the next column is SC, so that's the the you know that's the score combination. So here I just combine the average of it, um, and then from that SC column there we can sort this this score function. We can get a, get get to a rank rank function there. So the final rank of the score combination that's the last column of the left uh, table there. But then on the right hand side we can also you know remember we said that you know every score function we can change to a rank function by doing shorting that score function there. So we have a rank function of J1, J2, J3, and then we can use the rank combination over there. And then we can sort these rank combination values uh, into a ranking, and in this case, we have to sort this into ascending order, so we get a final outcome over there on the right-hand side. So now if you look at these two outcome of the combinations, they are different. Uh, the question here is that, you know, which one's better, and better in what sense? But in this case, I just want to point out that judge three is kind of biased. Uh, you know, give give uh, a skater number eight a very very low score, and everybody else is very high score. You know, higher score. So in this case, skater number eight, if we use the score combination, he or she has the disadvantage. Uh, he's going to be you know, rank number five, you can see that. But then if we use a rank combination, T or C is still rank number one because he or C received a very high score, 10, from judge one and judge two. So you can see that there's a asymmetry between score function and a rank function. So the question here is that, how do we take, take advantage of that asymmetry? How do we understand that in a big data situation, of course, this is not a big, you know, this happens all the time. And uh, so then, you know, the question is how do we do that? Okay, next. So what I do here is that I calculate uh, a, a function, I call that a rank score function. That means from, you can see that, you know, we have, we have created three functions called three of the, called f. f is the rank score function, and that's really, Remember that the score function is from the data items to the scores. And the rank function is from data items to the natural numbers. So here I created a third function called rank score function, um, and I call that rank score function. And that's from the rank to the score here. So we have three rank score functions, f sub j1, f sub j2, f sub j3. And um, and here, you know, the, the numbers here, we have normalized that already. And uh, and you can see here, if we draw the rank score functions of those three judgment systems or three attributes or whatever, you can see that there's a strikingly, you know, clearly, you know, difference between judge three, you know, the rank score function of judge three and the rank score function of judge one and judge two. So you can see that. So the area in between uh, we, are, we are using, you know, I'm using that area in between to measure the similarity between those two scoring systems. Uh, you know. Now, this is quite strikingly different from the traditional statistical approach. In that case, you can see the top over here says, I say, data correlation. And the data correlation, the concept was uh, conceived uh, in the year 1885. That's exactly about 130 years ago. And then later on, you know, Pearson's, you know, you know, kind of uh, set up the, the, the formal definition of it. 
And in the 1920s, then you have a Kendall's Tau, and you know after that you have Spell and Low. And uh, so, so this cognitive diversity, I define cognitive diversity is really between, between the area, between those two rank score functions. Okay. And uh, again, I want to emphasize that this is different from the Pearson's correlation or the rank correlation of uh, Kendall's Tau and Spell and Low. Okay. Next. Uh, next slide, please. So, so this one is really a, a mathematical foundation of all this. Uh, you know, as I say, um, you know, the the score function is really from the data items to the you know the s real numbers, and then after sorting, we can construct a rank function from data items to the n to the natural numbers. So we construct this. We define this new function called rank score function, rank score characteristic function, and uh, you know, from N to R. Now I want to emphasize that, you know, by by this definition, you know, it's very very interesting to note that, you know, the rank score function is really in the sense is really no that dependent on on the D. D is the data items. So in the sense that we are lifting ourselves up to the information level rather than at the data level. And the statistical correlation concept is defined between two score functions and between two rank functions. And that's all depending on the data items there. So that's why there's a, some kind of, uh, you know, if, if we have a data set changes and, and different changes in that correlation, uh, the, the, the number would, would change. And that's why we know that, you know, right now many people know that the statistical correlation is more data uh, dependent because it, is, it gives the measurement of the data distribution difference. But the cognitive diversity is more data independent because it, it shows the, the, the scoring asymmetry between, between rankings. And uh, so that's the difference. Next. Next, please. Okay, so here one of the real, you know, examples here is the virtual screening. That's in the pharmaceutical company. They do this uh, all the time, and uh, and you can see here is a combination of five scoring systems here, and then we have A, B, C, D, E on the right hand side, and then we have two combinations. We have three combinations and four combinations and five combinations. And then the the blue one is rank combination, the, the pink one is score combination. You can see that the first time you can see that combination of everything may not be the best. And that's why, you know, some of you have read this book called The Wisdom of the Cloud. In some sense that's that's correct, but in in the big data situation, you know, it's not quite correct because you know many things are, are you know data driven. And here you can this example, this is one of the example. Uh, we are using this, in this case, just, this is one example uh, of this uh, paper published in 2005 in the uh, chemical um, you know, medicine um, uh, research journals over there. So you can see that combination of the five is not the best. Yeah, but here, combination of B and D, rank combination of B and D is the best. Uh, but then you can see that on the left-hand side here, B and D, they have a very big cognitive diversity, okay? But you can, if you look at the, the first items over there, A, B, C, D, E there, and the B and D, they perform not that bad. So, you know, E is the worst, and the B is the best. Okay, so, so next item, next slide. So basically, what this, this slide shows that we have 80 of the two combinations in terms of uh, all the different proteins, uh, you know, from TK to uh, to other proteins we have, and those are the 80 points here. And x coordinate is the performance ratio of the two combinations of the two systems, and the y coordinate is with the diversity, cognitive diversity we have. So it clearly shows that the zero. Circle is the positive cases, and the X is the negative cases. So you can see that combination of two systems that's is better than individual systems. 
better than the best of the individual systems. Uh, we call that positive cases. That can happen only if x coordinate says that they are those two systems are relatively good. And that means, you know, theoretically speaking or intuitively, that makes sense because if you have one system perform 0 0.9 and the other system perform 0 0.1, combination of those two systems, you never get to 0 0.9. Okay, so in this case, you know, you know the, the both systems got to be performing relatively good. On the the y-axis shows that, you know, but they are they have to be very diverse. You know, so that's the diversity come from. Okay, next slide. Now this one shows that about 10 years ago we did this. Uh, you know, this in the information retrieval uh, search engine uh, optimization domain, we show that under certain conditions, and that condition including the cognitive diversity, um, you know, rank combination can be better than score combination. So that's a, that's a good way to to detect to see, you know, under a, 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 you know, uncertain situation, say so how do we combine, you know, or, or when do we combine. Um, and that appears in the in this paper in, by you know in information retrieval uh, journal. Next, next slide. Yeah, this one is about target tracking. Uh, so the target tracking we are using only three features: uh, color, position, and shape. Next, next slide. Um, and we show that you know by using the three features, if we know how to if we calculate the score function and rank function. And if we combine them, you know, if we know, if we know the goal truth, then you know we can perform very, very well. You know, if that's the rung number three, you know, the third column over there. But if we don't know. Normally, we don't know the goal truth, and uh, you know, we don't know what we're gonna do. You know, and in that case, we calculate the cognitive diversity. If it's between those two features, cognitive diversity is very big. Then we use rank combination of doing that. And that will be the column of the rank number four, uh, rank number four uh, the fourth column over there. So we show that if we do this, this column here is not better than the goal truth. That means uh, supervised learning over there. But it's better than the traditional you know, uh, Bayesian approach of the rank number two. So it's, it's kind of nice to, to, to see that, you know, to see that can, you know, we can use the cognitive diversity, which is, as I say, I pointed out, is data you know, items uh, independent in some sense. Okay, next. So this one, we are doing this in a cognitive informatics case. You know, we throw a coin uh, token 40 feet away, it landed at point A, and then we are asking two people, two persons, to see, okay, where did that token land? And one says at P, one says at Q, and we ask them about the confidence interval. So then we use these two informations, P and Q, these two locations. Those are the predictive location of those two people. And we want to use those two information to, to infer that so we can get a combining of those two systems. We created those two scoring systems. And we combine them using rank combination, score combination. And we can try to get a better result. That means better than, better that means closer to the actual landing site, A. Okay. And this is what we did in this, uh, you know, called visual perception systems. And uh, this appears in uh, just this year in the Brain Informatics uh, Journal of Brain Informatics, published by Springer. Next. Okay, so basically, uh, I want to summarize that cognitive diversity can provide information diversity complementary to and in contract with the stat statistical data correlation. So number one, we are talking about similarity. Okay, so you know, in the in statistical, you know, traditional statistical, we have Pearson's, we have you know, Kendall's tau, we have Hood rule, we have Spearman's O. The second item here is that we are talking about goodness of fit. How do we do the model of fitting there? And uh, in statistics, we have you know, you know, we have you know, everybody have been using this chi-square test. Or we have been using, you know, Kolmogorov's Molinov test, but in this case, the cognitive diversity can provide an, an alternative to to do uh, model fitting. Uh, so that's number two. Number three is the cognitive computing we have to be talking about between two hypotheses. 
I know in the Watson computer, the technology over there, the QNA technology, we have multiple hypotheses and we have to combine them. So each hypothesis can be can be a scoring system, and how do we combine them? We can use the, the you know the things here. And in Watson, uh, we use uh, the use the technology of natural language processing, machine learning, you know, uh, information retrieval, and of course use ensemble and so on. And we have to combine them, you know, and those we treat those these systems as uh, as the scoring systems, and we can use the the here called combinatorial fusion algorithm to combine them. And we have score combination, ring combination, and of course you have many other combination methods. You know, one of them is, is called partial order set. It's just in combinatorial computing over there. Next. Okay, so this is my last slide. Uh, I just summarize it. Cognitive systems that are capable capable of combining a group of diverse and a group performance scoring systems from a variety of sensors, sources, and the software. And here I, I really emphasize the good performance. It doesn't have to be very good, you know, high, you know, higher performance. As I say, 0 0.9, you know, you combine 0 0.9 and 0 0.2, this method is not gonna work. But basically, if you have something like, uh, they have a very diverse, but also, you know, their performance is at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and the combination you can get to 0 0.8. So that's the point here. That's the that's why these cognitive systems can cognitive diversity can point us to the asymmetry between scoring systems, the well, scoring function and the ring function. So in this case, the cognitive system with this capability can serve as a resilient engine and backstop for the new. This is the kind of new scientific discovery paradigm. In in a sense, that uh, in the night from the 19 uh, from the 1600s. The scientific uh, discovery process has been a reductional pro process. But now we are talking about in the big data environment or unstructured data environment, we're talking about integration. You know, we have to combine things together, combine multiple hypotheses, combine uh, information data from different sensors, different sources, different software. Uh, and so this is in the era of data-driven human interactive knowledge discovery. So I hope, you know, today's uh, you know, what I share with you can be of helpful to uh, to your work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Frank. This is Wendy. Um, just a reminder for everyone: if we run out of our last 60 seconds here for questions, that you can put your questions and discussion on the LinkedIn group for Cognitive Systems Institute group on LinkedIn. So please go ahead and do that because some folks will probably have to drop. Is there anything quickly you want to address to Frank? You're all unmuted. Hey, Frank. This is Jim. Thanks very much for the yeah. um, presentation. And I'm gonna. I do have to run to another call, so I'm gonna follow up on the LinkedIn uh, board. Um, so, but thank you, and, and I'll follow up with email as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll end the call. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs>